Congratulations. Thank you. Did you like it? <laughs> that never stops feeling good. You know? <laughs> um, Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Well, I, I have a few questions for First, each of can you. I, can I, please. Yeah, I just, I want to do a shout out because please. there's a couple of, uh, actually quite a few important people here. Um, <clears throat> one is Sheldon Harnick, the man himself. Yay! I, I can't see where he is. Yay! Yay. Sheldon. <laughs> and his wife, his lovely wife who accompanies him. Um, Two of our executive producers, Patty Kenner and Rita Lerner, are here too, I believe. Wave your hands back here. Yes. And um, Guy Mintus, who, did, who came all the way from Israel to, to uh, play piano for us and record wonderful additional music and soundtrack. And then there's Kelly, um, if she's, I think she's here. Who, <laughs> Um, so I had to do that first, and I'm glad you did. I, well, I, they're the ones that are the ones that made it happen. So, well, there's there's a few different directions we can go. We'll try to tackle a few different topics, uh, and then I I do want to give our audience a chance to ask you a few questions before we uh, head across the lobby for some some drinks, and we can keep talking and snacks and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, can I please, yeah, I was. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> My wife says I talk too much, but. I, I also want to um, say that we miss Hal, Hal Prince. Mm -hmm. um, in the versions that will be in the theaters, which start August 23rd, there is an opening credit that says, In Loving Memory. So um, he was terrific to us and told us amazing stories, and we have hours and hours of wonderful interview material with him. And um, we miss him. Yeah, why don't we, um, thank you for saying that. Um, why don't we just uh, start at the beginning? Why don't, why don't you share with us uh, what were the original kind of seeds? How did the conversations about this film start? And maybe also each of you could speak about your own connection to uh, Fiddler. Okay. <laughs> Um, it all started with Sheldon. Um, we saw Sheldon, who was a part of a, uh, a panel at the Museum of Jewish Heritage several years ago, and he was telling stories of how Fiddler on the Roof came to be, and um, the stories were incredible, and some, many of them are obviously in our film, but Sheldon is incredible, and we realized this is, um, this is an amazing storyteller, and this is an amazing story to tell, and so we um, asked him if we could start to film him and start to explore this idea, which we did about, maybe starting about three and a half years ago. Um, and I think originally it, 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 the concept was, let's just tell how this amazing piece of enduring art came to be. But as we got deeper and deeper into it, we realized that it, it was a lot more than that. And um, it's resonant for reasons that were meaningful to us and others who see it for you know on, on a much deeper level so that's sort of how it became it, it, it evolved into what it is today uh, anything that I, I mean as you create something whether it's the original fiddler on the roof or whether it's the Tevye stories that were done so beautifully by Shalom Aleichem or our film um, you start to dig and as you start to dig, you find more and more and more and more and more things that are remarkable. But Fiddler on the Roof is like a gold mine. It's not a, a simple Broadway show. It's an incredible treasure trove of, of, a, of the world. Um, and uh, it, it was magical digging into it. It was magical having Sheldon tell us the stories, and then we started to get the interviews of everybody, and, and, um, and we realized that it wasn't just simply about a musical on Broadway. It was telling the story of the world in a hundred years, and 
it's still there today. Look, look what happened this weekend. Um, can each of you recall your first connection, your first, uh, the first time you experienced Fiddler in whatever context you might have experienced it? I think I saw the film before I saw the show. Um, I think, in fact, the first time I ever saw the show was, was when I was working on this film and we went and saw the, the Broadway revival in 2016. So I am not one of these people who grew up with it in my home, you know, every Hanukkah, that kind of thing. Um, I know that, and I, nor did I play, you know, Motol or Yenta. I mean, I, the number of people who we tell them that we, we're doing this film. I would say, love oh to see God. you as Motol. I know, Motol would be good, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, my love for the show, it's actually, it's actually um, a testament to the power of it because I fell madly in love with it um, in, the tell, in the making of the film rather than, you know, from a sort of childhood perspective. Uh, I grew up in Montreal and I didn't have a chance to see Broadway shows in Montreal. So, like Val, I saw the, um, the film first, but I used to go to visit my aunt, aunt uh, Lola and Uncle Leo. I think everybody has, everybody in the Jewish religion has an Uncle Leo. I, I'm positive about it. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Uncle Leo is everybody. Anyhow, um, so we, they took me to some Broadway shows and I went to see, um, Chaim Topol in, in very early, well, 10 years after the, the film, so it was 1980 or 79 or something, and um, I was in tears. And I said, hmm? How did that happen? And then when I saw it with my kids, they would look over and see me in tears again, and they'd say, what's going on? <laughs> it, it was wonderful, and uh, it's part of me. It's, it's um, meaningful that you talk about the resonance of the story uh, today, even this weekend, as you said. Um, maybe you could expand on that a little bit and talk about how, uh, maybe it, not just in that context, but also what were some of the discoveries for you? What, what about it, as you started digging, talking with different people involved in the creation, what were the things that either surprised you or the connections to uh, today that maybe also were illuminating I just want to say one thing, uh, again, uh, in all transparency, I, I'm a son of a Holocaust survivor, so when I first, my mother was in Auschwitz, and when I, was, I first saw this show, I was actually quite uh, surprised that there wasn't a reference to the Holocaust, uh, which is such a prominent, certainly was a prominent part of my life, in terms of growing up, I mean, I heard the stories from the time I was five years old, and my mother did not hold anything back. Uh, but I didn't see it in the show, and I said, how could they not do that? But I'll tell you a, one magical thing. Um, at the end of when they're leaving Anatevka and they're packing their bags, uh, Chava and Fiedka are leaving, and they say, we're going to Krakow. And I remember when I first heard that, I said, oh my God, that's where my mother was from. And then I realized that this young couple was doomed because 30 years later, 35 years later, they would be just the right age to die in the gas chambers. And um, I, I asked, I think uh, Elisa Stein is here, Joe Stein's wife. Hey, <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't mention you before. I, I, I forgot, but um, I, I talked to you about that. I, I always was wondering, since Joe is not with us, I was wondering, did he really mean to put that line in, we're going to Krakow, where people are more uh, easier to deal with? And I, I, I'm just curious, did he ever m say anything of that to you? We have a microphone right behind you. No. I, I, I just feel he, he must have. There was no reason to choose Krakow. It could have been any place. It could have been Berlin. It could have been Paris. It could have been, you know. So anyhow, that, that was one of the ma moments Maybe for me and all that. Instinctively he did it. I think he did instinctively, yeah. yeah. Very I think so. 
So. <laughs> <laughs> Caught her by surprise. Slightly. Okay. Um, Connecting it back uh, to, sure. to the, the, the illuminating aspects of making it, maybe aspects of, um, of this story that became more resonant with what's happening today, but sure. also things that maybe revealed themselves that, that were not necessarily in your mind on the surface. Well, um, I think it's sort of a two-part answer. Well, on, on, a, on a positive note, I think that what we both realized very quickly was we we're trying to get to the bottom of you know, the, answer, the question of why has this show sustained itself for so long. But we didn't really realize that it has sustained itself across the world, around the world. We did not know that they put it on in China, in Russia, in Africa. I mean, if we just don't have footage of those performances, but they are there, you know? They, they are put on, there's a, there's, a, there's a man in Mexico who has made an entire career for himself out of playing Tevya. So, you know, it just was shocking to us that, that this was the case. And we have this wonderful footage from Bangkok, and, you know, we, we were fortunate en enough to have some bits and pieces of that to express that idea. But it's remarkable how resonant it is with every culture. So that, to me, is, you know, it, it, it's the ultimate sort of test of a piece of art, if, if it can travel like that and touch people, no matter what language, what age, what time, you know. So that was really revelatory to us, and, and, and it changed the, the way that we decided to put the film together. Um, and then in terms of today, you know, we started making the film in, in 2016. <laughs> so um, just as our country was shifting, um, we, were, we, were, we were dealing with themes of displacement and refugees and pogroms and Val is very you know. polite about <laughs> Trump. She, she you know, wanted, she's just very polite. We decided I, I, not to, I mean, I'll, I'll say, so we had one image at one point of, um, of Trump um, in, the, in this montage of, you know, modern day images. Do we have two? Yes, when it we says keep refugees he, out on the right hand side of the screen, it says something about Trump's victory. Support well, we Trump's had an image victory. of him on a stage embracing the American flag. Hugging, yeah, whatever. Um, so we decided to take that out because, not because we were sheepish, but I think more because we wanted our film to be um, timeless to some degree. You know, it's, it is about what's happening in our country, but sadly it's most likely about what's going to be happening in 10 years too, you know? It's not necessarily about his presidency. It's about the sort of sad truth that these things will always be with us. So that was sort of the, the line that we decided to walk. But mm -hmm. it was very much a part of our film for us. Mm -hmm. I was going crazy during the election. And, and the year, year after, I kept on saying, Val, we got to put in these images of Trump. And she said, no, calm down. She, always, <laughs> she, she calmed me down a lot and, and, um, and said, you know, you could hit some of Buddy over the head with a hammer and they won't see anything. Or you could just tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, take a look at this and pay attention. So I think most people get it. Um, let me see what questions the audience wants to ask you. I want to give you a chance to ask a question, but if you just promise to wait for the microphone before you ask your question, that way we can uh, hear you. Um, so we'll go back here and then right in front of you. Yes, there's a microphone right, yeah, right there. And then right in front of you. I'm wondering if the, the... Could you speak louder? Speak like Tevya. I am wondering if the performances uh, with the story and the dancing and everything was shown in part of Europe that the Holocaust was additional to Ukraine. Was it in like Czechoslovakia or uh, we haven't Croatia, shown it here, Greece, etc.? And do you think it will be there? And how it will be accepted? I'm wondering. Yes, it will. It will be all over the world. Um, it's opening August 23rd. Um, we know that this is a private screening, and we had an amazing screening in San Francisco, 1,500. People were cheering and clapping. We had in Toronto where we won, won the audience. And all I kept on telling people was, this is not the Avengers. We're not going to get $100 million worth of advertising. <laughs> you know. Um, but if we all talk about it, 
um, if we all speak to our friends and say we really like that you should see it, uh, we're hoping we're going to get the audience that we're expecting. So it opens August 23rd, all over the country, here in New York, everywhere, even Montclair, New Jersey. That's where she's from. So it's the very beginning of the of the life of this yes, film. Yes, yes, yeah, I mean, it will travel. I think it's fair to say that it will it will um, play around the world, and I think that it will play well around the world for the very reasons that the world is represented fully in the film. You know, it's um, I think it will play in the Ukraine. We'll certainly bring it there because it's in the film. We hope to bring it everywhere, but it has yet to go. So we have distributors already in Canada and in Israel. Uh, and uh, the UK are now uh, wanting it. A a everybody wants it uh, eventually, but we we uh, it has to still play here. And we want to see. I think they're waiting to see how it does. So um, your word of mouth, your word of mouth. Tell a friend. Tell two friends. Tell a friend. So yes. The, uh, I'm still speechless from watching this. It's so powerful, and thank you for doing this. Thank I you. I happen to be a documentary filmmaker as well, uh, and I've been filming a, a documentary called Observing the Observant uh, of the Ultra-Orthodox, and, uh, um, and, and I can just see that come to life still today. And in reference to the question I have is, uh, I've been filming my mother, who's no longer with us anymore, uh, and she said to me one day, uh, if you want to know about America, ask an immigrant. And I think that's really Amen. what your, your film is about, and, and uh, uh, is about the refugee experience. And what, I wonder what the sequel to, to Fiddler on the Roof would be. There's a book, actually, an interesting book. Sure. Um, so, um, one of the actresses that you saw on the screen, um, she... Alexander Silber. Uh, Alexander Silber, I'm sorry. I'm bad at names. Um, she wrote a book called After Anna Tevka, which is quite successful. It's about the couple that went off to Siberia, uh, where she says goodbye to Tevya and goes off to Siberia, and their life there. Um, it, so... Uh, I haven't read the book, in, in all honesty. I, I did, did see a reading for it, but um, it, it's a continuation of the story. But I think Fiddler on the Roof, all of you are part of that connection. Um, you could just look around who's here in the audience, and each one of you could probably take out old gray pictures or brown pictures and say, this was my great-grandfather in the Pale of Settlement, or this was my uncle in, in uh, you know, the Ukraine, or the, whatever. Um, it's all of our lives, and everyone who in America is a refugee has that same connection to, to the past, so. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, I think part of what makes the film bittersweet is that I think even though the, the Holocaust does loom over Fiddler on the Roof, ultimately, I think when you watch the show and you, you feel, okay, these people made it. Like, these people are who we are now, right? These are our forebears. They made it to Europe, they made it to America, and now here we are. And now we're telling their stories. But now, people are not making it as much, right? They're being stopped at the border. So, I don't know what the sequel is. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's the same story as it was. That's, sadly, that's my opinion. I was going to put... Tevye in a cage with Donald Trump and do like a battle royale and Tevye would kick his ass. <laughs> Don't you think Tevye would kick his ass? Yeah, Come that's, on. That's the Avengers, right. <laughs> the Avengers. <laughs> Maybe just one or two more before we... Uh... Yeah, there's a gentleman right here. Hi. Hi, I enjoyed this film extremely well and uh, this is actually brings my memory about arriving in this country in 1978 and uh, enjoying this music, singing and everything else. Now, there is a question I would like to ask you. It's like, is there any, any record about our cousins, so to speak, 
staging Fiddler on the Roof. Our cousins. I, I'm, you know, Arabs. Oh, Arabs. Um, oh. Arabs? Oh. I think so. I, yes. Yeah, I think that we, we, yes. we uncovered... I think it, it played in... It was in Morocco. Um, and um, certainly in, in all of Africa. I mean, Nigeria. Yes. And, uh, yeah, there are definitely Muslim countries. That a lot of Muslim countries it, yeah. that had it. Uh, it was very, very interesting. Maybe Saudi Arabia. Yeah. yeah. I, I, oh, no, not Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I don't think so. I, anyhow, maybe, I may be wrong, but I can't just... They don't even allow women to drive. You know? Well, it was all men, but yeah. <laughs> uh, all, well, this so the English. Um, no, I, I haven't seen it, but it, it has been remarkably in places where... As a Jew, you say, like the kid from Thailand who says to us, I'm from Thailand. What do I know about a shtetl in Europe in 1905? But he did. And they are so connected to it. Um, fire alarm, fire alarm. Fire alarm? Okay. Maybe that's our sign, too. It's sort of... <laughs> I want to thank I want to thank our guests and we'll continue talking thank across the so hall. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank much, you so for, much coming. for coming. Spread the word. Congratulations.